The sound of Severodonetsk being pounded and broken by bombs never stops. Ukrainian troops vastly outnumbered here can see the Russians blasting their way in. And underneath all these explosions, there are civilians still trying to survive. One of the main bridges linking the city to the rest of the Donbass has been bombed. It's now impassable. So the only way people can now leave and aid can get in is on this last usable bridge which has been hit several times already. This is the city's remaining lifeline and the Ukrainians are only just holding on to it. Inside there is a humanitarian disaster rapidly unfolding with thousands of people still here. This is a city which Russia would have banked on being pro-Kremlin with strong links and often with relatives living there. They are very reluctant evacuees, but they are fleeing in the face of this terrible onslaught. It's hell. You know, it's hell uh, first, uh, everyday shelling. Second, a lot of death. Third, humanitarian uh, problems. The Seoul Working Hospital is now surrounded by Russian troops, so the only chance for the injured is to be evacuated. And this is one of the very few evacuation trips. Now it seems like the front is all around the city. It's practically surrounded. There are tanks. There are like the, you, we can see uh, uh, trucks from the army being being deployed around the city. So it seems very clear that to me uh, it's about to fall. Are you glad to be going? Yes, we're glad to be going. Yes and no, um, I don't know. <laughs> Feeling sad about leaving as well. But time is running out if they're to leave. And these volunteers hope to be back later to help more flee. A handful are delivering water, strapping bottles on the back of their bikes to take to those trapped in their homes. My Astana give me. He was a musician once. Now his world is filled with the sounds of war. A small moment to collect himself. But we will win, he tells us. Everything will be okay. Thank you, he says, and kisses my hand. There's work to do. Valery's another. It's far away, he reassures us about the bombing. The strength of these people continues to astonish. He doesn't even flinch. We're used to it, he says. It's been three months. Valeri and his wife Nila won't leave. They've notched up 135 years between them, and they're now enduring bombs which are landing every few minutes. It is unrelenting and goes on and on as he weaves his way back through his community and takes us to his home where he and his neighbors have been sheltering and where he's been ferrying food and water to where there seems to be still a fair amount of people living. His neighbours tell us how hard it is to get even water. Yelena's saying she has to carry two or three bottles by hand. Everyone begins to panic at what sounds like cluster bombs landing far too close by. We head for the doorway to shelter. Open the basement, Valeri shouts. Come, come, he says. I'm used to it. Everyone piles inside, waiting for yet more incoming bombs. Every day is like this, Yelena tells us. It was quiet for just 10 minutes. Every day it's back and forth like this, flying over our heads. <laughs> 
Seconds later, Valeri is punched by a neighbor. He's angry at Valeri for bringing foreign journalists here. Many blame us for prompting the bombings. Was he pushed? This war has set pensioner against pensioner and forced neighbors to turn on each other. Please tell the world what's happening in Donbass, she says. What's she saying? What's she saying? And show please how it is. Yeah, yeah, we will. I'm trying not to cry, she says. I'm trying to keep myself calm, but you need to tell them what the situation is. Well, this is going on all the time. Constant barrage. It's unbelievable that there are so many people who are still living and having to put up with this. They're right in the middle of it. At the aid hub, more injured have been brought in, and one woman has got a very nasty head wound. Yeah, there's no gunshot wound, it's just uh, shrapnel. Um, the worst injuries to her head, but obviously she just needs to get evacuated for that. It turns out Sky News colleague Nick Davenport is the most qualified medic here, probably in the whole of the city. There's a police-trained first aider too, who asks not to be identified. There are two badly wounded here, but most certainly not the only ones in dire need of medical help in the city. Emma is back with her evac team, but her vehicle has broken down, so she's urgently trying to find replacements. We only have two uh, passenger vehicles. So Somehow, the aid hub manager finds a way out for them. This is going to be a difficult and dangerous journey for them, but at least they have hope. There's very little of that going around this city right now as the Russian troops close in.